Hey loves, welcome. We're here to share loving vibrations and to encourage oneness. We shall deeply discuss about frequency, quantum physics, loving vibrations, energy, law of attraction. We hope you will share the love and spread it too. There's no way on earth I could fake the things I found and the things I write about. I consider myself the reporter, the investigator, the researcher of lost knowledge, because I soon found that the information I was getting was either lost, forgotten, or never known at all. And that's what I like to write about. The things that nobody knows, to get that back. And it began coming with my work. But I, I am a hypnotherapist, and I specialize in past life regression, past life therapy. But I started 40 years ago. So I've been doing this a long time, back in the 60s. I was doing it back the first time as a hypnotist back in the days when it was watch the shiny object. Remember those old, old methods, if there's anyone in the audience who is a hypnotherapist. And he had the long drawn out inductions. I always said you relax them from the big toe all the way up. And you had the tests that had to be performed. None of that is necessary, but it was the old methods of hypnosis. And that was the way I started out. And you know, the habits, stop smoking and lose weight. To me, that's so boring now. <laughs> I'd much rather time travel. <laughs> but if somebody comes to me and wants to stop smoking or lose weight, I'll tack it on to the session, but it's not the primary object. My object now is therapy and trying to help the person. And that to me is so easy to do the habits that I'd rather do the other type of therapy. But um, back in the 60s, I had so many things happen. I'm not gonna go into the whole story, uh, but in my last book, The Convoluted Universe, book two, I put in the first chapter the story of how it happened, because people kept saying, how did you get into this? What happened? And see, I've written 13 books, but actually I've written 14 because the first book has never been published. It was called Five Lives Remembered, and that was how it all began in those early days and told the story of how it all happened. And that was the first book I was trying to get published way back. Now when I speak at writer's conferences, I always tell them, don't expect your first book to be published. It may never be published. You have to keep writing more and more and maybe one down the road will be the first one to come out. They think, oh, I've got this one book, but that one has never been published. I don't know if it ever will be. People say it should be because it tells the beginning. But to me now, it seems so mundane and ordinary compared to the adventures I've had since then. But it does tell the story of how everything began. And that's why in the last book, I decided in the first chapter, I'll tell the story of how it all happened. I'm not gonna go into it a lot, but I had to put everything on the back burner because my husband was almost killed. He was a Navy veteran of 21 years, and uh, he was almost killed, and he ended up being in a wheelchair for 25 years. He was put out of the service, and when all that happened, we had to move, and we moved to Arkansas, of all places. But there's a whole story of what went on in there, because my first exposure to reincarnation, past lives happened in, uh, back in the 60s. But I had to put everything on the back burner when that happened to my husband. And he really shouldn't have lived, because he was just, his body was crushed, and his face was torn apart, and it ended up, that uh, he was in braces, he was partial amputee, and um, he went into a black, black depression where he didn't want anything to do with anybody for years. So we had a lot of rebuilding to do at that time. That's what I, you know what, um, who was it, OT or one of you were talking about, we, uh, Justine, we all have our challenges. We all have the things we have to face, that's life. I don't think you can live very long without going through these things that you have to experience. That's what life's all about. 
the tests and the challenges and how do you come out of these things. Because when I do some lectures, especially on life after death, I tell people everyone has bad things that happen to them. But did you learn anything from it? If you learned even one thing, that was the reason for the whole experience. And I could do a lot of soul searching to find out what happened with mine, but it turned me into a completely different person from an independent, ordinary housewife taking care of four children and a husband in a wheelchair into what I do now. I would never have suspected it would have gotten it into this. But that's all part of growing and changing. Some people tell me, oh, they're not even my age, and they'll say, oh, my life is over. The children are all grown, they're gone. I don't have any life anymore. What am I going to do? I said, your life could take a 180 degree turn. You could be doing something you would never have thought of. Your life is just beginning because now you're free to do anything you want to do. And they don't think about it that way. Because that's what happened to me. Mine went in a totally different direction. <laughs> but it had a lot of bumps along the way. <laughs> But anyway, um, I had to put the hypnosis and the past life regression and everything on the back burner when I moved here because it was mostly concentrating on my husband and the family. And it was the 1970s, the end of the 70s, when I finally was able, the kids were grown, they were going off to college, they were getting married. And it's like, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? The empty nest syndrome. I decided to do something different than what the average mother would do. I wanted to get back into hypnosis. I had been exposed at, in the 60s to reincarnation, past life regression, and it was so startling because there was nothing out at that time except for the search for Bridie Murphy. No books tell you how to do any of this. But to me, it was time travel, and that's what I wrote about in the first book. It was so... Uh, life-changing. I couldn't forget about it. I'd opened a door to the unknown and I wanted to get back to that. So in the 1970s when the kids began leaving and what was I going to do, I wanted to get back into past life regression. I didn't want to do the normal hypnosis anymore. But I knew there had to be an easier way. The old methods were too long, too slow. So I began studying the newer methods, and now it was being done with visualization and imagery. So I started doing that. But over, I've been doing this now, this would be about 30 years when I started in the 70s until where I'm at now. As I began doing it, I began seeing some of the things that hypnosis were not needed. And I thought, why don't I try this instead? And I found that as long as you're not harming the client, my first you know, um, thing I always emphasize is the care and protection of the client that I'm working with. If you're not going to harm the client, why not try something that's different? Because somebody in the beginning had to have invented the ways of doing this anyway. Somebody had to start out somewhere. Why do the long, drawn-out things and all of the other uh, unnecessary things? So as I began doing it, I began dropping things and adding things. And this is why over the 30 years, I've developed my own technique. And it has been proving to have astounding results because I'm now able to have contact with the subconscious mind. I call it the subconscious. But it's more like OT has talked about. It is the oversoul, the higher self, the higher consciousness, whatever you want to call it. Through the technique, I've been able to tap into that part. Now, in normal hypnosis, they're able to talk to the subconscious by hand movements. They'll say, raise one finger for yes or one for no, which is very slow and time consuming. Why do that when you can have the subconscious talk back to you? and give you the answers. But now I'm teaching this to psychiatrists and psychologists all over the world. They said, we never thought of that. They didn't think it was possible to do that. 
but that's where the answers are. All of the answers are in this higher self. Why not go to the part that has all of the answers and get it from them? But what I was doing in the beginning was just, I call time travel. I was taking people back into the past lives. And in Arkansas, people kept saying, where were you finding your clients? 